The last defining characteristic of ASD is restricted, repetitive, and stereotypic patterns of behavior, interests, and activities. This deficit must be manifested in at least one of the following criteria. First, a child must exhibit strong interest in a specific topic or toy. Many children with ASD gravitate towards numbers, letters, and colors in their play and communication with others. Some children become fixated on videos and will watch the same segment of a video repeatedly. While it is common for typically developing children to have favorite toys or watch a movie over and over again, red flags present when a material is not age appropriate or when the child's memory, skill, and interest presents with unusual intensity. Next, a child with ASD may have rigid ideas about time, travel, and routines. These issues can revolve around feeding, dressing, and the placement of objects. Parents and practitioners often report that a child with ASD thrives on structure, has difficulty adjusting to change such as vacation or moving, and will become agitated if the routine is altered. This often can be seen in children with ASD during play. They may insist that a play sequence unfold a certain way and become annoyed or withdrawn if peers or adults alter their preferred course of action or placement of game pieces. Probably one of the most obvious symptoms of ASD includes atypical body movements. While this is not always indicative of autism, it is often the first thing people notice in terms of unusual behavior. These atypical body movements include spinning, unusual positioning, body rocking, toe walking, flapping hands, and flicking or crossing fingers. Lastly, a child with ASD may engage in unusual play-based behavior including lining up and stacking toys, categorizing them or positioning them in a specific way, repeatedly dropping or spinning objects, and visually examining objects by peering at them through the corner of their eye or waving it through their field of vision. A classic example is a child who, rather than functionally playing with a toy truck as intended, will flip it over to watch the wheels spin. Again, we're looking at all three domains of symptoms associated with ASD. It's important to understand that under the current DSM, Autistic disorder is currently defined by difficulties in all three domains. To qualify for an Asperger's diagnosis, a child demonstrates deficits in the social and behavioral domains. They cannot have an identified history of communication difficulties early in life, meaning that their basic expressive and receptive skills do not impair to appear to be impaired before age 5. The diagnosis of pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified has become a diagnostic catch-all for individuals who meet the severity of many of the defining characteristics but are not fully satisfying the criteria for either autistic disorder or Asperger's disorder. As noted, there is no minimum number of symptoms and this diagnosis will often present with an enormous variance of symptomology across areas of potential impairment. In order to qualify as an individual with pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified, an individual needs to experience severe and pervasive impairment in some of the various symptoms already discussed, as well as delays or abnormal functioning in either social interaction, language as used in social communication, or symbolic or imaginative play. Thinking about the diverse domains and range of severity within those domains, it is easy to see how incredibly diverse the presentation of an ASD in an individual might be. If you think about each one of the diagnostic domains discussed, you may be able to place them on a continuum or spectrum all their own. For instance, a child may range from being socially withdrawn and isolative to socially innocent and naive to manifesting difficult social behaviors that may cause them to be labeled as rude. 
Here, you can see several more examples of this continuum. Interestingly enough, some of the upcoming diagnostic changes encompass this idea of varying levels of severity. The most recent version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or the DSM, is currently undergoing revisions, and a new edition, the DSM-5, is expected to be completed in May of 2013. In this version, it is proposed that the umbrella category of pervasive developmental disorders will be eliminated, and all of the diagnoses falling under it will be collapsed into one category autism spectrum disorder. Rett's disorder will be eliminated from this category entirely as it has been determined to have its own specific etiology. It is rationalized that the distinctions between disorders have been inconsistent over time and were often related to associated features of the disorder rather than core features. ASDs are considered to be represented by a common set of behaviors and as such may fall into one diagnostic category with clinical specifiers, such as severity and verbal ability and associated features, such as components and comorbid disorders. The new proposed diagnostic criterion condenses the three current ASD criteria into two domains that will have accompanying severity levels. These domains are social communication and interaction and behavior and interests. Concerning the social communication interaction domain, it was determined that many of the deficits in social and communication behaviors were inseparable. The current proposed revision suggests three criteria and impairment would need to be present in all three. For the area of fixed interests and repetitive behavior, there are four criteria, an impairment would need to be present in two of the four. You have now completed Module 1, Autism Spectrum Disorder Characteristics. In this module, we reviewed the current diagnostic categories, the characteristics of ASDs, and the pending diagnostic changes. Please proceed to the post-assessment.